Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another breakdown. Today, we are looking at a commercial. And this one stood out to me because it was just so simple, right? And simple isn't easy. But simple means you don't need all the toys all of the time, all of the lights, these big giant setups. Sometimes it's just about knowing what you're looking for, uh, using some simple uh, tips and some simple lighting um, formulas. It's not really a formula, but I guess it is you, just the framework, basically, we're going to look at how you can uh, employ that in a commercial that it's not tons of locations. In fact, I think there's only two locations, this whole thing, nice, simple, and easy, and shot by, uh, well, let's see if the internet detectives can figure it out. Cinematographer, not, well, they shot Star Wars, and not Greg Frazier. So someone who is very skilled, one of my personal favorites, and I'm sure everyone has seen his stuff, but uh, see if you can pick the style. Okay, so let's just run it through here. You'll be able to pick up what we're looking at. We have got Yep, commercial, phone, boom, place it on the thing. We're in a recording studio. We're singing a little song. We're in the control room. Back to the big studio. And more singing, little handheld move. I like the framing there. And we're down here laughing. Everyone's good. Charge your phone. Wirelessly pick back up. And life is good. Text message. Your studio time is up, lady. You must go. Okay, so that's the ad, right? Let's break it down. Let's go full screen here and bring up the old pin. Okay, so I guess we start with, we'll start with a wide here, because this is where the, the majority of the lighting comes from, right? We're going to realize, okay, we got to do the close up stuff, we got to get to do the singing stuff, that stuff is all on the boards. But the lighting that we can do in the wide is going to dictate the look that we can get in the close ups. So as always, in this wide shot, who knows if this is VFX up here, and they've just taken the light out, or if the ceiling is actually that high. Let's just imagine the location is this cool. What you're going to want to do, big soft box up here, pointing straight down, skirted off of the walls to create this nice little point of interest here. And then this little bit here, but we want to keep the darkness there because we want this pool of light. Because the pool of light, much like we always talk about, you want to be shooting across these pools. You don't want to be shooting from the middle of the pool out, right? If you're standing underneath the light, you look up and you can see the light. That's not where you want to be standing as a cinematographer. You want to be shooting across this thing, picking angles this way. What does that do? Well, if, if the subjects are also on the outside of the pool, right? This is just like the dinner table scene. If you have your pool of light, which is going to be here, if the talent are on the outsides of the pool and you're shooting across it, you're going to be good. Right, because what you're going to be doing is shooting right into the shadow, the shadow that the little pool is creating. And you can see here the angle that the chair is gives us just that little sliver of light right where the cinematographer wants the people to look. Okay, here the location it gets even cooler because we don't have any distraction up here. Right, we don't need to see up there this little room. This is a nice little intimate uh, recording session. You got a little highlight there, red recording light here, which gives us this reflective. Um, little highlight down there. Also, all this stuff down here is nice and cool, right? Because you get just, it's like a wet down at night. It just ups your ambient, ups the interest. If this was just completely black, it starts to get really, really boring. So you just want to create that depth. And then it's hard to see here, but notice how we are not just flat to this wall. So if you crab right, pan left, you would be much flatter onto the wall. Whereas here, we are just looking almost into the corner here. You can feel the wall back here somewhere. That's the corner of the room, which again is just there to help stack things and create depth. So we've got this as a little element. We got our foreground elements here with a little tiny highlight, right? That's all you need. Just those little tiny little accents. We don't need to see everything. A little bit back there. Then we've got this little structure here, face, this cool looking thing. Uh, you know, not obstructing the person's face, obviously. Uh, you want to keep that away because that's where all the focus is. And then the placement of the top light and the action inside the top light. Again, you want the majority of it between the talent and the back wall, right? That's where you want to place the top light because that's when you get this little wrap around. See that little wrap around in the highlights there that just wraps around this thing where this side of the pole is completely dark and this side is just getting a little bit lit up so it creates that edge. So now that we know that we can get this in the wide, right? This is well, we can get this in the wide. This is what looks good. Well, this is going to be our spot, right? And then we've created the line that we're going to be able to shoot down this entire time. As long as we don't go on this side of her feet here, 
everything is going to look good here. As we move in, we might want to soften this light because we're just going to get closer. We might want to bring in a little neg. Maybe we'll put in a little tiny backlight back here just to add a little hint if we go in for closer stuff. But really, the bones is there, which is why when you go in on the schedule, when you're going to talk to the first AD, you talk to the director, how are we going to run the day? What do we want to do first? You want to start with the wides and go close. You want to start with the close then go wide. You come in and you say, it's, it's, this initial setup is going to take the longest, right? This is the, this is the part where uh, you got to get people in early so that you can set this big rig. You can attach it to the ceiling, however you're going to do that, however you're going to suspend this lighting rig. You need to come up with that solution, and that's going to take the longest. As soon as you do that, though, uh, you get on a roll, which is what directors like, everybody in production likes. Uh, you're not stopping every single time you're doing these setup changes. You don't have to stop and do a complete relight. It's like, no, we're going to take a, a good chunk in the morning and – Go for it, preset everything. And then once we start rolling, as we go from this shot, you know, shot one on the boards, as we go to shot two, which is going to be this one, what are we, we're not, we're not changing anything. We set up the dolly track uh, and we're good. Or this looks like a walking shot even. We just change the lens and we're good, right? Because now, same thing. I mean, we've got little cool elements here. We got nice shadow, right? Shooting into the shadow. It comes a little bit on this side. I mean, you can feel the, the main light though is over here, which gives us, that nice little edge shooting into the highlight or shooting into the shadow, sorry. Then you've got the room tone back there. That's room tone, which is just being lit, in this case, probably from above, that same lamp. But if you didn't have that or you wanted more room tone, you could add something off to the side. The, the secret to adding the room tone off to the side, though, is if you are going to add room tone, you just need to make it as directionless as possible because you don't want to feel multiple shadows back here if you're going to try and fill in from the sides. Right? You, want it, you want it to just feel like you've knocked all the direction out of the light. So it just like falls on the background rather than smushing the light at the background. But here, you know, if you wanted this softer, you just put a piece of diffusion up there. The, the tricky part is the softer you go, the more it's going to spread, which means the more you lose contrast. So as you soften, you really got to add that neg fill to be able to, to keep the, the interest there. Uh, Okay, and then as we walk, you know, just a framing thing, we've got this little element in the foreground, right, which just makes it feel much more real. If you're just there openly, it's not near as nice as that. If we go to, where's our opening shots here? So same thing, right? This is an easy shot. This requires no difference. In fact, you could probably be shooting this at the same time you're shooting the wide shot, depending on the length of the lens and the size of the space that you can get into. There's no change here in lighting at all. We go from that to this. Okay, well, now there is a bit of a change, right? You can feel the exposure difference on the face. We go from that level to this. Okay, so now we've tried to make it a little bit prettier, the lighting. Focus still on here. Light coming this way. Shadow. Nice little reflection back here. And we are shooting, you know, I keep saying the same stuff. We're shooting into the L of this room, right? The, the, we're shooting into this to create depth in the close-up. That's what we're looking for. Little cues and little hints in the background. These two lines, this is what makes it interesting. Even though they're just slightly there, even though it's super soft. Nice little golden hint in the uh, back of the Samsung there. And then you can see over the fingers, over the fingers. If we were going to come around, we're in the perfect spot with the light. You don't have to change anything. You just soften it off. From there, we never, whoop, getting a little bit wobbly on the old phone usage there. That's where you look over after you're done operating the shot. You look over to the first AC, and they're just like shaking their head. Then they at, at lunch, they say, man, what is with her? Why won't you just hold the phone still? <laughs> and then you say, yeah, that's your problem. Uh, okay, from there, we go to the, well, this is the product shot, right? Product shot, this is the classic credit card shot. Just redone. Make sure you cannot see the frame, the diffusion frame in the actual product. At this level, though, if you can see it, they just VFX it out. Um, but you're just going to put the diffusion just back there. Point of interest is this table. Add another little element, things in the background here. Nice glow, little edge from up above. And then just wrap this light around. And then you set this level of darkness based on how close you bring the neg. Because the neg is over here, right? You bring it closer, this gets darker. You push it further away, this, this transition just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then however big you want it, that's how big you set it. Okay, from there, we go back to that shot we've already looked at. This one, again, close up, haven't changed anything. So that's, what is that, four, five different shots inside this little tiny space that we got all from the wide. Nothing really changed. Then we come to, where's that shot of them getting ready? This is the first shot of the control room. Okay, 
Let's keep it dark. Let's have this little foreground element with different red colors. And then we're gonna shine a light through here, keep it interesting. And that is going to be edge on this, edge, 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 dark, dark. If we come out to the scopes. Okay, so we're blowing out this window over here. We don't care about that thing. Everything else, look at the meat of it is all down in here. Just little tiny highs, right? These little tiny peaks is what you're looking for because that's the interesting stuff as we come across the image. Ooh. You got edge, edge, little tiny hint of light back there, just to again, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And then the, this thing is just compositionally quite nice. And then you can see the back of the room is over there. So that's the wall, right? Again, just creating as much depth as you possibly can. Okay, let's go to, I think there's one more in here where that one goes to, oh, this one. So again, just ideas to create depth. So we're still on the shadow side, right? Still shadow over here. But now we're using our little um, Star Wars red and black, beep, 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 whatever that is, recording things, recording buttons and whatnot uh, as our little frame, right? This is much like shooting through a door. Anytime you can find things to shoot through, it's going to create depth, which is good. And then the world's longest focus rack, right? Plus a little wobble. That actually looks like, that looks like it's been pulled off of the barrel of the camera. You know, you get like, that looks like DP operator focus pull. And it takes a little bit of time to get there too. <laughs> um, and then we go to the hands. Again, you wanna create mood, one light over here, shine it this way. Neg all behind the camera. Neg, neg, neg. Dark, 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 little hand. Reflective surface equals go. You're welcome. Shoot this commercial. Nice smile, and is that it? Pull the thing, and that's it. I mean, that's the whole ad. You just got paid by Samsung um, quite nicely to go there with one light, an understanding of the framework of shooting into the shadow, of making things interesting by shooting into the depth and trying to frame things that, um, you know, you just have a little bit of, is it hidden, is it not hidden? We're pushing past certain things in the foreground, in the background. As long as you can fit some of those things in, it's really simple. It doesn't take, uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you go out. It's just about fitting in, fitting the ideas into the space. What can you do? Can you do upstage lighting? Can you shoot into the corner, into the, the L of the room? Can you pepper the foreground with some little things to create depth? And then in the background, how many layers can you get in the background? Can you bring in enough neg? Do you add a little edge light? Just set the mood. And then from there, uh, you know, you're laughing. So that's our look here. If you know who the cinematographer is, if you can guess, uh, leave it down in the comments below. We'll see how the internet detectives can do. And that is going to do it. Uh, if you've got suggestions for other commercials that you want to see broken down or any techniques or looks, please let me know and leave them in the comments below as well. And that's it. We'll see you in the next one.